Hey guys, good morning. My name is Evan Frerichs. Welcome to Epic Every Day. And today I'm having trouble. <laughs> and I wanted to share something with you that encouraged me. I've been struggling with feeling like there's not enough time. Time is definitely not on my side. Time's just running away with me and I'm struggling to keep up. It's just the relentless pace. <laughs> I mean, 24 hours marches by every day, whether I want it to or not. And uh, it's been difficult. Um, got some goals that I'm trying to accomplish and it just doesn't seem like they're really happening. So I was in my devotional time today. I was reading this book by Henry, Henry Nowen. It's uh, about discernment actually. And this section on the nature of the way I see time and the, the, the way God sees time was really profound to me. I want to share that with you. Thomas Merton identified the signs of the times as karyos, a quality of time that is eternal when time is full of meaning and events point to divine purpose. In one of the many reflections on the topic, he wrote, the Bible is concerned with time's fullness, the time for an event to happen, the time for an emotion to be felt, the time for a harvest or for a celebration of the harvest. The Bible can be a good guide for our interpretation of events as we look to discern what God is doing and remember that God's design and final purpose is that God will ultimately reign and God's way of love will prevail. God's ways are not our ways. God's timetable is not always our timetable. Discernment calls us to settle into God's ways of measuring time. Clock time, or chronos, is divided into minutes, hours, days, and weeks, and its compartments dominate our lives. In chronological time, what happens to us is a series of disconnected incidents and accidents that we seek to manage or subdue to feel in control of our lives. Time becomes a burden unless we convert it into God's time. God's time, karyos, has to do with opportunity and fullness of meaning, moments that are ripe for their intended purpose. When we see time in light of our faith in the God of history, we see that the events of this year are not just a series of happy or unhappy events, but part of the shaping hands of God, who wants to mold our world and our lives, even when life seems harried and continues to have hard moments, we can believe that something good is happening amidst all of this. We get glimpses of how God might be working out his purposes in our days. Time becomes not just something to get through, or manipulate, or manage, but an area of God's work in us. Whatever happens, good things or bad, pleasant or problematic, we asked what God might be doing here. We see the events of the day as continuing occasions to change the heart. Time points beyond itself and begins to speak to us of God. That really... Uh harkens to me about the the wisdom in the Bible from the book of Ecclesiastes. It's a fairly famous passage about for everything there is a season, for everything. There's even a song about it. And I, so I'm struggling to remind myself and thank God for people like Henry now and, and for the Bible that can, because I always need a reminder that there is a time and there is a season and and the things I'm doing today, if they're in obedience to God, check out what it says in Ecclesiastes. It's, it's really profound, and, and especially the end of the chapter there, or that section was very encouraging to me. There is a season for everything, and a time for every event under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up searching, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What benefit does the worker gain from what he undertakes? I have observed the burdens placed by God on human beings in order to perfect them. He made everything appropriate in its time. He also placed eternity within them. Yet no person can fully comprehend what God is doing from beginning to end. I have concluded that the only worthwhile thing for them is to take pleasure in doing good in life. 
Moreover, every person should eat, drink, and enjoy the benefits of everything that he undertakes, since it is a gift from God. I have concluded that everything that God undertakes will last for eternity. Nothing can be added to it nor taken away from it, and that God acts this way so that people will fear him. That which was, now is, and that which will be, already is, and God examines what has already taken place. Did you hear that? He's saying that if we work, if we just do our good work, it's honoring to God. If we, this idea of a normal Christian life is something that I feel like I've got in my brain and I'm trying to define it and I want to encapsulate it and help people understand it. And I think this is a big part of it where it's not about glitz and glamour. It's not about moving and shaking everything. It's about this daily marching with God, walking with God. And he likes that. He likes it when we participate in that. And, and so even though, I mean, we've been working on these goals and uh, 540 days to go until I turn 40. And we started when there were 700. And what do we have to show for it? You know, it, it doesn't seem like a lot. I know Liz and I both have been getting discouraged by that. And, um, but I feel like we're faithfully working. We're doing one step at a time. I mean, half a step at a time sometimes. And so this, these words were encouraging to me. When time seems like it's running away, when you can't keep up, um, do what you can today. That's what they say in 12 step, just for today, that's to stay sober, but I think it applies to everything in life. Just right now, in this moment right now, if you're watching to the end of this video, just take a moment and breathe and trust that God can put you where he wants you and where you are now is a place where God can meet you. If you've moved away from God, God is right there and you can meet him again. Or if it just seems like there's too many things to do, try to do one thing at a time. I'm gonna to try to do that today. I hope you can as well. And let's embrace God's ideas about the nature of reality, how time works. God doesn't need to split time into minutes and seconds and hours and days and weeks and years and months. He has an eternal mindset and we can't have an eternal mindset just like that but we can ask for wisdom and discernment. God bless you today. Talk to you later.